Earlier this year, Tygo enhanced its module level power electronics with pure signal technology, which they say affords solar installers more margin for error when designing large, complex systems for commercial and industrial applications. How does it work? And how else can installers avoid crosstalk and other MLPE related issues? Here to make the pitch today is JD Dillon, Chief Marketing Officer of Tygo Energy. So it's no secret that historically MLPE and rapid shutdown systems in the CNI space can give installers headaches. And in the worst case, you know, they can be culprits of failures in a system, even thermal events. So before we get into the meat of what Pure Signal does exactly, can you explain the main challenges here from your side, the manufacturer side, what you see in the field and what you hear from installers? I guess in short, is rapid shutdown safe and why do we need it? Let's start with how ubiquitous the technology is. Um, according to the S&P Global Report, between 2019 and 2021, 75 million devices were installed. It is all over the place. It's here to stay. And that is a lot of units. So any failures that you ever see are few and far between. Now, why does it exist? Well, rapid shutdown exists to protect firefighters and first responders. As you can see here, the number of fires have gone down over the decades. And if you look at the top causes, they're cooking, heating, electricity, arson, and smoking. Solar is not even on the list. It falls into other. So rapid shutdown, you've got to balance the risk versus rewards. Believe it or not, there's 350,000 fires in the U.S. per year. Now, that number made me a little bit nervous when I read it. But as you saw, on a percentage-wise, it's very, very small. Only 155 since 2015 with solar. So I would say the first responder safety reward is much greater than the risk associated with rapid shutdown implementation. One of the main issues in this space is crosstalk. Uh, could you, uh, before we again get into pure signal, can you, I guess, explain, you know, what is crosstalk? It basically happens when there's two wires too close to each other. This happens in PLC. It has not happened in wireless. So it's limited not only to wired communication, it's limited to when the wires are too close together. So it can occur a variety of different ways, but we really only see it in very large systems with lots of inverters installed. So the issue is a little bit of design and installation best practices, even more so than technology. Um, so again, before we get into what Pure Signal is doing to help, can we drill a bit more into the design and install side of things? Here at Tygo, our goal is to fix the issue, not the blame. The solar industry has determined that there are three problems that lead to any sort of installation mistakes or problems. Design flaws, faulty installation, and equipment defects. Now, <laughs> the funny thing about this, every one of the equipment providers, such as Tygo, says it's a design issue, it's an installation issue. And I can tell you if you had an installer in here right now, he or she would say, no, it's the equipment. But again, we want to fix the problem, not the blame. On the design and install side, what, what are some more of those best practices, I guess, to be aware of when it comes to avoiding crosstalk issues and how do installers best, I don't know, make sure that their designs will not run afoul of crosstalk issues? Tiger's leading the way with a uh, four-point quality initiative. Now we want to preempt the design flaws. We want to mitigate installation faults, reduce solution errors, and decrease component defects. We want to do the complete solution from design to installation to the components. And First of all, it starts with an early risk assessment. In order to preempt the design flaws, we developed a tool. Now, this tool is not an on-site tool. It's an in-the-office tool. You call it up on the web. There's 11 simple questions. If it comes up green after you answer the questions, you're good to go. If it's red, give us a call. And if it's yellow, you ought to get to it, but it's kind of middle of the road. This risk assessment for installations, by the way, works with Tygo and non-Tygo systems. So that's on our website and easy to find. Second of all is training. So we have a design and installation course for our TS4, which is our product line for optimization, monitoring, and rapid shutdown. And it's self-paced, gives you some NABCEP credit hours, and a great guy by the name of Greg Smith teaches it. It's only two hours. Uh, it's a great course. And we've seen people use the course 
get their designs right. And then after you do the training, of course, there's documentation. Unfortunately, <laughs> if you're like me, I'm not a real manual reader. Uh, you can just ask my wife about that. But we have explicit documentation because hopefully more of our customers are. That spells out exactly what they do. Okay, great. So, so now we add in Pure Signal technology after we use the tool to configure our design. What exactly is Pure Signal technology, and what is it doing differently? Pure Signal is essentially a technology that goes on top of our transmitter, and the Pure Signal technology reduces the impact of electromagnetic interference. Now, in layman's terms, gives you more margin for error. If your design is a little bit too close together, it still works. If you don't always follow everything in our manual, it still should work. Now, this doesn't mean that you should follow poor design practices, but it's a very useful technology nonetheless. Can you quantify how many fewer issues there might be overall because of what Pure Signal is doing compared to you know, the previous status quo? We're still pretty early in the rollout of this. But rather than quantify, I'll give you an anecdote. Uh, the plural of anecdote is data. Once we have data, we'll come out with it. But as of right now, we took it out to Catalyze, a wonderful installer. And let me read here what the director of construction said. Pure signal technology helped us avert a significant amount of rework after a design review showed that some of our cable runs could be at risk of crosstalk issues. He is testifying to exactly what this technology was designed to do. So on that point still on the margin for error front, does the, does the margin for error uh, that you're affording, uh, does it come in when we've, only when we've used the tool and done it the way we talked about with the um, going through the, the quiz and kind of looking for the red, yellow, green? Um, or does it forgive some of the install and design flubs that ordinarily would have caused issues too? Out of the gate, it works. You do not need to do all of the other things. You do not need to run the tool, although it's recommended. You do not need to follow, oops, I better not say that. I was about to say, you do not need to follow the best practices. You still should. But if you don't, it allows you to. So you don't need to do all of the other. It's just a good thing to have. To me, it's like having anti-lock brakes and having a airbag. Does it mean you should drive crazy? No. Will it help you if you do? Yes. So before we go, can you also remind me how many inverters Tygo is compatible with? And and also thinking about Pure Signal, will I need to make sure they are those inverters are certified to work with Pure Signal? We're compatible on multiple levels. Uh, we have 233 that we're PVRSS compatible with. Now that's full testing with the UL lab. We have over 900 that we've tested internally. Now that can be requested by customers if they submit, if they want the 901st, uh, they can submit a request and we will do that. And then we also have had over 2000 inverters that have been installed on at least two or more sites. We are all over the place and we're compatible almost everywhere. And the precise answer to your question, the Pure Signal is backwards compatible with all of those inverters. Before we go, I think we touched on the overview of everything and what Pure Signal is doing, but uh, anything else you want to note uh, before we go? So I have three final points to leave with. Number one, we did not talk about Tygo's product during this discussion. I want to be very clear that we have shipped 10 million of the TS4s since 2016, 0.01% RMA rate. That is very, very good. Now, we've shipped 3 million of the rapid shutdown only, which, if you remember, has the wireline communication, the PLC communication. Now that one is the one that is a little bit susceptible to crosstalk. So it makes sense it's a little bit higher, failure rate. Now out of the gate, it was just under 0.5%. We've been continuously working on that and batted it down all the way down to 0.1. Still not 0.01, but it's getting there. And I would argue that that is better than many of our competitors, but it's not good enough for Tygo, and we will keep working on that along with all the other initiatives. Because in the end, we are dedicated to quality and rapid shutdown. We want to preempt the design flaws. We want to mitigate the installation faults, reduce solution errors, and decrease component defects. 
So I was walking around SPI the other day and a friend of mine came up with a great quotation. It's Ben Franklin. We must all hang together or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. So that's Ben Franklin when it applied to the rebels during the Revolutionary War. And I will co-opt that as that's James Dillon now as we enter the next stage of solar quality. Uh, I like I like that quote a lot. And I exa- absolutely know what you're talking about uh, when it comes to that. Um, so, J.D., I appreciate you taking the time uh, today. And thanks for joining us on The Pitch. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate it.